Hello dear viewers, today we are making crappy rocket motors. The reason for making crappy motors is, well, you gotta start somewhere. And the broader idea is for this video to set a baseline on which we can improve on in future videos. Starting with the aluminum case, this is a little trick my uncle Tony taught me. The aluminum tube I picked for this is 20mm wide and 1mm thick. I'm using 60mm long pieces for the motors. Now the motors that I'm making right now are going to be as simple and easy to make as possible. Then I'm going to start changing the materials, nozzle shape and other variables to hopefully improve them. Now in order to test this, I'm going to need a test rig which can measure thrust and that is going to be our next video. After the tubes have been sealed with tape, I'm mixing up some gypsum plaster to use for the nozzle. Now this material isn't exactly ideal, because as the motor burns, it's going to erode away, the nozzle is going to get bigger, which decreases performance. But because this is our first rocket motor, we're not gonna worry about that too much. I'm using a pair of digital calipers to make sure that the nozzle sizes are approximately even between my motors. Although just weighing them on a scale would be a better way of doing this. The nozzle thickness is about one sixth of the total motor length. Meanwhile, as the gypsum was drying, I decided to mix up the fuel. The propellant is a mixture of potassium nitrate and sugar, with an added dash of printer ink. The printer ink is not actually a component of the propellant mixture, it just allows you, the viewer, to see the mixing a little bit better. And probably ever so slightly decreases performance. I quickly realized that putting all of the propellant into a single bowl and trying to mix it was overly optimistic, so I ended up having to grind it in a couple of separate batches. When everything looks homogeneous, we can do a little flame test to check if the propellant burns well. And you can see that it's not the fastest burning thing, but it will get the job done. Eventually I got bored of burning propellant and checked on the motor casings. After removing the tape, everything is looking nice. The material must be completely dry before moving on to the next step, filling the motor casings with propellant. I made myself a little aluminum scoop and shoveled the mixed propellant into the motor casing, making sure to spill some on the table. When the casing was close to overflowing, I packed down the propellant. Packing the propellant as tight as possible increases performance and ensures it won't just flow back out when we drill the nozzle. Using a press would be better and casting would be optimal, but considering we are trying to keep it simple and not burn down the house, any tight fitting object will work just fine. Like with the nozzle, keep about one-sixth of the chamber length empty so we can seal it with epoxy in the next step. Make sure no propellant is stuck to the walls, otherwise the epoxy won't stick well. If you just want to make functional rocket motors, this step is not important. But I want to analyze the motor performance, and to do that I need to know the exact mass of the propellant used. This will allow me to calculate values like the specific impulse of the motor in future videos. These motors ended up containing around 13 grams of propellant. With the propellant masses written down, I mixed up some epoxy off-screen and lined up the motors for casting. The epoxy needed a couple of hours to cure, and the printer ink ended up partially dissolving in the epoxy and gave it a lovely blue tint. The 
The last step in the process is drilling a nozzle. I used a drill bit which is about a fifth of the inner diameter of the aluminum casing. We want to drill through nearly the entire propellant, leaving just a little bit to make sure to insulate the epoxy on the other side. Make sure to use a decent drill bit, because using a terrible bit could theoretically produce enough heat for unscheduled ignition, which would not be desirable. Drilling the hole in the center is also generally considered a good idea for reaching maximum altitudes, but more sophisticated flight patterns can be achieved by drilling the hole off-center. And that's it, we give ourselves a pat on the back because our first crappy rocket motor has just been completed. Pretty simple. To give a bit of perspective, these are the tools we would have to use to make an actually good rocket motor, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. So, let's do the only thing that matters and set one off. So, too long of a burn time, an eroding nozzle and barely enough thrust to lift its own weight. I think we can confirm that these are in fact crappy. But hopefully you now know the basics, the foundation has been laid and we can move on to much more interesting things in the upcoming parts. So thanks for watching and until next time, farewell.